Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Cody. Cody is someone that I have always looked up to. <laughs> Hello, freedom-loving Iowans. Good morning. I'd like to thank Congressman Steve King and Citizens United for making this day possible and uh, putting Iowa once again in the national spotlight. Uh, during the last campaign, I ran for 587 days, not that we were counting, and my mother, who was 82 years old at the time, passed away during the campaign. That was a very difficult time, as you can imagine. And she always told me, Rodney, if you tell my political jokes on the campaign trail, you'll win for sure. <laughs> now, my mother had a little dementia, and I could never convince her that I was not running against President Obama. <laughs> True story. But here's one of my mother's jokes. I think you'll like, I hope you'll like it. Husband and wife are walking along a beach, and of course they stumble across a bottle. They pick up the bottle, and out pops a genie, and the genie says, I'll grant each of you any one wish. Well, the man, the husband, he doesn't even stop to think. He just says, I wish for everlasting life. And the genie says, oh, I'm sorry. That's the one thing I cannot grant. You'll have to talk to the Almighty about everlasting life. He turns to the wife, and he said, how about you, ma'am? Well, she stops and thinks. And he said, what's your answer? She said, I have it. She said, my wish is, I wish to die the day after Congress balances the budget. <laughs> And based on what I've seen in Washington in the first month of being there, she's going to live a long, long, long time, my friends. Well, Mom, they liked it. You may or may not have heard I was one of the, the 25 uh, people in the, in the uh, GOP House of Representatives that uh, cast their first vote, and I cast my first vote for change. And this was... And this, my friends, was not anything personal with Speaker Boehner. Very nice man. I get along with him very well, even today. It was a vote against the status quo. I ran for two years across eastern Iowa telling people, you send me to Washington, D.C., I will vote against the status quo. I will vote against business as usual. And my first vote reflected that. Business as usual is holding back this country, my friends. won in the first district of Iowa. It's one of the most Democrat districts, what well, is the most Democrat district in Iowa. And I believe my secret to winning was I listened to we the people. And my advice today to the presidential candidates is listen to we the people. I li yes. I've only been there for four weeks, but I'm pretty sure, my friends, that the only special interest group not represented in Washington, D.C. is We the People. <laughs> Our presidential candidates need to listen to working families when they tell them their incomes have not grown. In fact, they've gone down since Barack Obama has been president. It's a fact. Median household income is down over the last six years. Median household net worth is down over the last six years. My friends, our working families in this country and in this state are stressed. We need to listen to them. We need to reignite this economy. This is the worst economic recovery, the worst, post-World War II. And I always get asked, how can we change it? How can we reignite the economy, Rod? The simple answer is get government off the backs of our small businesses and out of our back pocketbooks and let us do what we do, grow our businesses. <laughs> our presidential candidates need to listen to the people when they say, you know, my wife and I both work, we pay our taxes, we're playing by the rules. But a large and growing segment of our population in this country chooses not to work. 
We need, my friends, a, per a rebirth of personal responsibility in this country, and I can sum it up in one sentence. Government should not do for a person that which they can do for themselves. <laughs> Our candidates need to listen to the people when they say, we sit around the kitchen table, we make the cuts necessary, we balance our budget, our city and county balances their budget, the state of Iowa balances their budget, why can't the budget in Washington, D.C. be balanced? <laughs> Ronald Reagan was right in 1980, and he'd be right today when he said, no nation, no nation, can tax and spend its way to prosperity. Our candidates need to listen to the people when they talk about government itself needing to be reformed. For two years in the campaign trail, the number one question I got asked was, Rod, how does Barack Obama and his administration get away with fill in the blank? How does this FBI Justice Department get away with wiretapping AP reporters without a warrant? How does the NSA Department get away with spying on American citizens without a warrant? How does the President get away with selectively enforcing DOMA laws? How does the President get away with selectively enforcing immigration laws? And now, how does the President get away with providing backdoor amnesty? My friends, the message was sent in November, and Congress now needs to send a message to the President of the United States that no one, including the occupant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, is above the law. Thomas Jefferson said it best, and I'll paraphrase it. He said, there's two groups of people that can do harm to the great citizens of this wonderful nation of ours. The first are criminals. The second is government. Let us bind the second group with the chains of the Constitution so they do not become legalized members of the first group. And that, my friends, is where we are at. So in ending, my message to these wonderful presidential candidates that we have, and it's an amazing lineup of candidates. I've campaigned alongside most of them personally over the last two years. My message is, it's not complicated. Listen to we the people. Thank you so much. God bless you, God bless Iowa, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.